A radio station named Sonic 102.9 comes up with a contest to engage its listeners. The contest is simple, have people go on a photo scavenger hunt. Starting in February of 2006, one of the founders of the station and morning show host, Garner Andrews, would give listeners a task. They would then have to take a picture of them doing the task with the Sonic logo front and center, and then send it to the station's email. Each picture was given a point for accuracy, for visible branding, and eventually for boldness. At the end of the 20 days, the person with the most most points would win $10,000. Sounds simple, right? Well, what if I told you this contest would lead to multiple arrests, having people banned from seniors' homes, taking contestants to every corner of Alberta, and interrupted municipal proceedings? Here is the story of Sonic's Snap Happy Contest. Welcome to Dive In Radio, the freshest, biggest, smelliest hits north of Cowtown. Good morning, listeners. Hope you're all doing well on this fine, cold morning. The weather is looking grim with a chance of the white stuff coming down thanks to that Idaho low and the Siberian high. Dive in traffic. On to traffic. It's hunting season on Calgary's Deerfoot, so watch out for the cherries and the berries with their phasers set on stun. Edmonton's white mud is under a white out. As for Lethbridge's scenic drive, you won't be sightseeing anytime soon. Expect big fog rolling over most of the province. <laughs> On to dive in with the news. <laughs> dive in news. Sonic 1029, a local Edmonton radio station, is in some hot water thanks to a photo scavenger hunt that caused some chaos over the month of February. Contestants have been blocking bowling alley lanes, jumping into fountains and man-made lakes, bothering the mayor at his home and interrupting his civic duties, and most retirement homes are banning any visitors to their residents over the age of 100. On a positive note, tourism is up in some of Alberta's smaller towns thanks to the final task of the contest. Now back to our daily playlist of the same 10 songs where at least one of them is Nickelback. D -d Dive in radio. Take a picture with a Walmart greeter. Simplest of all the tasks. Very self-explanatory. Everyone got this one easily. This was also very easy. You had to go to a mattress store and sleep in one of their test beds. This was turning out to be a pretty easy 10 grand. Mm. Clearly day one and two's tasks were too simple. It was time to mix in some illegal activity in the form of criminal trespassing. Today's task, swim in a fountain. Not overly hard, just a bit of criminal mischief. This is where the boldness came into play. Merely standing in the fountain wasn't enough anymore when you had people jumping over the railing at the world's largest mall into the man-made lake. The police quickly caught on to this and started patrolling fountains in West Edmonton. Even our beloved bronze whale statue wasn't safe. That's when savvy swimmers went to other fountains around the city and soon the police started to shut those down. A few arrests later and the day was done. If you made it this far, there was a good shot you'd be able to do the rest of the tasks. Day 4 was the first flash mob. To those who weren't around in the early 2000s, flash mobs were like an internet 1.0 fad. Just think of those videos of coordinated dancers in public places, or everyone suddenly falling to the ground, leaving spectators totally bewildered. Back in the day, it was rare that people would meet up thanks to a radio station or the internet, so this was still new and cool. This flash mob would take snappers to Churchill Square outside of Edmonton City Hall. Oh, if only the mayor and his councillors knew how many people would be back there in a very short amount of time. Day 5 was to take a picture with a goth. A very forgettable task. Next. Day 6 was another flash mob, this time outside Rexall Place, then known as Skyreach Center, where the Oilers would play. The Sonic Bunny would be parked next to the Wayne Gretzky statue. Fun fact, something was in the air in 2006, as this was the same year the Oilers went to the Stanley Cup Final. The city would tear itself apart during the playoffs, but that's a story for another time.
take a picture at the wrong end of a bowling alley. Again, pretty easy task. Play a full game, ask to take a picture, voila, task done. Day eight was to get a picture with then Edmonton Mayor Stephen Mandel. Now the mayor's a busy guy who travels to a lot of places, so the plan for most people would be to camp outside his office. His secretarial staff had no idea what to do. They locked the doors to his office and let the close to 100 or more people sit in the hallway. I still remember when he walked in, took a look at all of us and turned around, only to walk back with the biggest fake smile on his face. Slowly, everyone got their picture. And when it was my time, I mentioned that he had met my father. All he had to say to me was was, he should have raised you better. At this point in the contest, Sonic wasn't in the hottest of water. Sure, a bunch of people jumped into some fountains and got a slap on the wrist. That wasn't so bad. Today's assignment seemed to go too far, as people started to look up the mayor's address, followed him home, and then asked for pictures there when he was eating supper. Sonic had a little chat with some of the contestants. They received some pretty harsh words from the mayor's office. The fact that contestants met him at his house hadn't left a good impression on him, and if it happened again, there would be consequences. So no more trespassing or bothering civil servants. Today's task was an easy one. You had to go to a car dealership that advertised on the station and take a picture with a specific guy. I believe his name was Jeff. the halfway mark, and once again, the task was a cinch. Take a picture with a dude who had a mullet. Easy, they're all over the place in Edmonton. The public stuff had brought on too much heat, so they started to go to private businesses instead. Today's task was to take a picture with fast food employees. Easily done when it wasn't the lunch rush. ride Edmonton's light rail transit system and take a picture at every stop. I recall doing this early in the morning, so there wasn't much of an issue, but others complained that they got tickets for riding the train either for too long, or they just didn't buy a ticket at all and got caught. Overall, pretty simple task. Oh, day 13. The day that even the private businesses started to fight back. Today's task was to take a picture with someone who was 100 years or older and you had to give them a high five. At the time, there were only 19 known centenarians in the city, so palliative care homes and retirement communities were suddenly swarming with young teens or 20-somethings that were looking to take a picture with some of the residents. I had to work, unfortunately, and by the time I got around to the task, I was sad to find that every facility that housed a centenarian had barred its doors. Unless you were family or a doctor, you weren't getting in. And I wasn't the only one who missed out. Apparently the facilities around the city caught on quick and called each other. Before noon that day, no one was getting in to any single retirement community in the city. I cheated and found a 98 year old to give a high five to. Once again, police were cruising the malls, but everything went off without a hitch. Three quarters of the way there, another flash mob, and this time it was at the corner of Gateway Boulevard and White Avenue, probably the most popular pub crawl area in the city, also the site of the former CN Rail Line and the oldest working hotel in the city, the Strathcona. Why am I telling you this? Because this was a boring task. Showed up, take a picture, go. So this one was deceptively hard. I paid for a slushy, started to do it, and the workers kicked me out. So I went to another convenience store, and I had to do it behind their back. It was a great success. Another flash mob, this time at the carousel in West Edmonton Mall's amusement park, Galaxyland. The only memorable thing about this was that I skipped my college course to show up here. I didn't have too much trouble with this one, as one, I used to work at a grocery store, and two, no one really patrols the aisles in Canadian grocery stores. This was way harder in 2006 than it is now. 
Way back in 2006, the only place you could find drag shows was in gay bars, of which Edmonton had like three, or the occasional comedy club. Not hard, but not impossible. Everyone was on pins and needles. What would the last task be? The station teased it on day 19. The host said, if you could do everything else, you could definitely do this task. What the hell did that mean? All of the contestants were on their toes and ready to run. The final task, take a picture with five iconic Albertan landmarks. The T-Rex in Drumheller, the Starship Enterprise in Vulcan, the giant bat in Edmonton, the giant Easter egg or Pasanka in Vegerville, and the giant sausage in Mundare. The trip would be over 800 kilometers long and take you to the far corners of central and southern Alberta, in an era before good quality Google Maps and smartphones where no place had Wi-Fi so you could easily upload pictures, this actually was quite a difficult task. I recall waking up before dawn, picking up my girlfriend and a buddy, and hitting the open road to Ukrainian homesteader country. First we hit up the giant sausage in Mundare, a short 80 kilometer drive, then another 20 kilometers to the giant Easter egg in Vegerville. Then disaster struck. My friend needed to go home. Why? Well, I never found out. So we drove 100 kilometers back to Edmonton, dropped him off, and started our way down to Drumheller. On the way, we snapped a picture with the giant bat on Edmonton's north side, and then three hours later, we were in Drumheller taking a picture with the giant T-Rex. Another hour, and I was eating Spock burgers next to the Starship Enterprise. The person who served me was shocked at how many people had come in and ordered food. The business was booming thanks to a little radio station in a trailer located along Niskew's Oil Row. We got all the pictures. There was only one problem. They had to be submitted Submitted before 11.59 p.m. that day to count. We raced to my cousin's house in Calgary, uploaded all the pictures, and then made our way back to Edmonton with a few moments to spare. The final task was done. Now all the contestants waited to see who would be the winner. Turns out there wasn't a clear winner. If I recall correctly, there was five people who had all gotten the maximum amount of points. I sadly wasn't one of them. I knew I should have jumped into that damn indoor lake. The last five contestants were brought into the studio and given a task. Find one of the Sonic interns at a Tim Hortons. If that sounds easy, you clearly aren't from Canada. In this country, there's a Tim Hortons every 10 city blocks. So which one would the intern be at? Well, they gave a few clues and let the contestants go on their way. After some searching, the lucky winner walked up to the intern at the city center Tim Hortons outside the movie theater and was crowned the champion. The winner would use the $10,000 to fly back to her family in Poland and of course pay off some debts. A well-deserved vacation after all the running around she did. As for the rest of us, some were angry, some were bitter, but me, I was kinda happy. Sure, I didn't win, but I did get to do some truly odd stuff that I would never have thought to do before. It's hard to release your inhibitions, but when there's 10 grand on the table and you're doing it for a contest and there's a bunch of people also doing it, you kinda let things slide. A great time was had by most and everyone was looking forward to the next snap happy contest. However, in a retroactively smart move, there would never be another snap happy contest. The morning host Garner Andrews mentioned it, how much trouble they got in and how taxing it was to run the contest. It just wasn't worth the manpower and the possible legal troubles. I still look at Snap Happy with fond memories and when I dusted off the old hard drive, I found the photos and smiled a little bit. I knew I had to tell this tale. Thanks for watching.